Yeah. Okay, now. Everybody's yes. phone's off. Everybody's phone's off. Everybody yeah, cool. I don't have my phone on me. I do. We're sponsored by Rebel. <clears throat> do I look right, good? Matt, How's do my it. hair? Are we good? We good. Are we, are we ready? Yes, we're good. Okay. Welcome back, guys, to another edition of the Not So Round Table. We're joined today by Jet from Desert Fox Airsoft. And once again, this is George and myself. That's enough of an intro, I think. Uh, so how this works is you guys submit your questions in the previous video. So if you watched our first version of the Not So Round Table uh, and you enjoyed it, you asked us a couple of questions. Uh, those questions get uh, get put into this really cool tactical helmet here. And, uh, and then when we're joined for our next video, we draw out of that helmet and uh, answer your questions as best we can. Okay, so, uh, so Jed, do you want to Oh, yes. I would, I would love to. Okay. I'm going to dig deep. <clears throat> Digging deep. Oh, okay. What's my fortune? For whatever reason, we fold these. I don't... Uh, Celeste Star 1973. Buying guns used. Hmm. Was that a question or a statement? Yeah, it's a question. Oh, buying buy, buy, guns used? Buying with guns a question used. mark on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so basically, it's basically, what's your opinion on yeah. buying used airsoft guns? Um, hmm. I actually, I mean, okay, as a, when you're a new airsofter, I would, I would say no, don't, yeah, don't, never. don't buy a used gun because there's always going to be these little quirks and things that people do to the gun. And if you're brand new, you're not gonna notice like, oh wait, this guy replaced this screw with a screw from Home Depot, or some other little quirky thing. Um, plus, you're gonna want that warranty from a gun that you from manufacturers. So that's interesting. I'm kind of the opposite. I really? would say as a new airsofter, why not? Craigslist is such an amazing thing now. You can literally pick up a $400 gun for $150. True. I mean, there so is if that you're, cost. If you're aspect. really budget oriented and you don't have the money for a you know a reliable gun that is in that price range. Why not check out Craigslist? As long as the guy's mm -hmm. upfront about the modifications he's done and that it's a working gun, I'd say if you can meet up at a field and test fire it first. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. like you're you, buying you a red tag where you can't test fire it first. Yeah, you right? definitely want to test fire it. Don't just be like, all right, dude, I'll send you the money right now. I'll send me the gun. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I would never buy a used gun from for Airsoft. Never, Don't ever. use Craigslist to get around the 18-year-old policy, though. Still, if you're selling used Airsoft products, don't sell to a minor. Be, yeah, you know... Be mature about it. That's true too. We as retailers don't sell uh, to minors, so you shouldn't as a, as an independent reseller, even if you're selling something used yeah. of yours. So, so you would never buy a used, even even if it was like a like it's like a five hundred dollar like retail like five hundred bucks, and some guy was like, I want one fifty. It's like I used it twice. You you wouldn't you it wouldn't did, jump it, on I, it. No, because I have bought and used guns before. I like one of my AKs is used, but I mean, I would never buy like a really not like if I was like if it was a four hundred dollar gun, I wouldn't want to do it. The reason is, is because, like, they say, I made a modification, I upgraded the gears or whatever. How do you know that they're good tech? How do you know they didn't screw it up? Yeah, I love the, it's custom. It's Unless custom. the work was done it's, by, and by the it's way, custom. It's custom. Okay. If it says it's custom, that doesn't raise the price $300. If it's wrapped in carbon fiber, buy it. <laughs> Let's go. All right, <laughs> Matt, Matt, just pick the next question. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, this one is from... Mo Moglin Marine, or Moglin Marine. Uh, okay, hey Matt, can you talk about airsoft shotguns? Some people f frown on them for some reason because some of them are springers. Talk about that for your source fed segment. Thank you. Thanks. I like this. Question. <laughs> I, I like this question. He, he plugged it. And, <laughs> thank you. If you, if any of the source fed are people watching this, I'm sorry. We're not trying to track your idea. I just. Uh... <clears throat> all right, so well, I'm, it, I, I mean, it was shotguns. aimed at me, but let's just a I'll answer it. So, what do you guys think of shotguns? Okay, I, I'm gonna be kind of biased right now. I just picked up the new Tokyo Marui M870 tactical shotgun. Woo, that thing is awesome. Which is a three shot though. It's a no, shot. no, it's a no. Three shot to six. It's shot. a three and six shot okay. shotgun, and I played with it yesterday. Oh my goodness, six shots is amazing. Like. Like, like, okay, so here's, here's the level of shotguns we're at now. Like, Marui was just like, bam! <laughs> like when the M3 first came out. Yeah, like, whoo, like... Well, okay, f for me, a single fire shotgun makes very limited amounts of sense. Yeah, that's, that's just... The range isn't that great. The accuracy is terrible. 
It's just for looks. Um, and, uh, you know, and at that point, it's kind of for looks. So I can understand people's frustrations with those and why maybe they're frowned upon because they're not very usable on the airsoft field other than being like, oh, look, he's got a shotgun. That's cool. Um, in terms of gas-powered shotguns, some of those things shoot really hard. Like the M500. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or the 8... Um, what's the 8mm? Eight, eight 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 eight, no, that 8 mil one. Like, you might as well just be shooting marbles at your friends. Right. Like, that oh, yeah. one's just scary. Uh, we, we, but, we use a lot of Marusians with my group, as you know. Yeah, okay. I've seen and, you guys... Uh, Shoot and some people you get, close. you get, and I think the reality of like the grenade launchers we use, like the M two hundred three, it's old. a glorified yeah, shotgun. Yeah, uh, and I think the more, especially with the six shot Marui, like the more we get into doing shotguns that fire more rounds, that's when it's cool and usable, and when I think it should be used more often is, you know, if it can put more rounds down range in a spread pattern like a shotgun should, then hell yeah, use it on the airsoft field, shooting one at a time. Then not that interested. Yeah. yeah. As for the Springers, they're practical. I mean, if you're gonna Cheap. run around with, to me, that is the ultimate backup gun. That that spring shotgun because all you do is just fill the shell up, stick the shell in, put it on your back. That's oh true. no, my battery died or <laughs> I have my piston stripped. It's now time to bust out the spring. That's true. Well, and they're all like forty to sixty dollars anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. I just and they're wish... a good workout. I mean, you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's harder to pump a, uh, an airsoft shotgun than a real shotgun. It's like a shake weight. Yeah. All right. Next question, George. This is good. We're moving, flowing, Ugh. getting ideas going. Okay. This is Ben De Roos. Love the series. What exactly is the difference between milsim and regular airsoft? Oh, this is a really good question, and this is so actually really, um, a question that comes up a lot with a lot of new players. Some people. Some like Milsim people don't know how to bridge that this gap, I feel. I feel that some people are all about the Milsim and they don't understand what sometimes you just gotta go play yourself. Well, I feel like the question is what are the differences? So like yeah. maybe we should highlight, okay, well this is what's it's generally event, accepted it's as Milsim. Event, it's on an event basis. Event can be a Milsim event or an airsoft event. Right. I'd say maybe the rules is what is the difference. That that would probably be the biggest difference. I mean, okay, so to me the differences are gonna be the the duration of play okay so a pickup game a regular a regular game you're gonna play for like maybe a maximum of 30 minutes okay a mil sim op you're gonna be on the field at least an hour plus yeah um let's see the, with an the objective with an objective the scale the scale of the game is much much bigger a mil sim game you're gonna be on this uh you know big ao hopefully you're on a big ao with a lot more people on the field at once so we're talking mm -hmm. at least a hundred people a hundred yeah. people on at least i would say 20 20 acres plus okay so that would be a good scale as t as as opposed to a regular game you're going to be playing on you know maybe 50 50 000. like a football field yeah size, maybe. yeah maybe even smaller and maybe there'll only be like 20 dudes total so 10 on 10 and because the average game length is shorter uh, you get more time to, to reload. I feel like also Milsim has a, a uniform requirement. I mean, most of the Milsim games we go yeah, to, they're yeah. designated Sometimes. size. Yeah. Usually green versus tan. Right. I think another difference maybe be the magazine capacity limits. Yeah, magazine. High cap versus that. You maybe have squads. Maybe you have a command structure. Yeah, if the infrastructure is completely <clears throat> the infrastructure, different. Yeah. So with Milsim, there's a general emphasis on replicating a real environment with airsoft guns so there's yeah. a command structure uh designated teams and uniforms and squads and the duration is much uh more towards a, like a, a like a like a unified yeah. event you're, you're gonna ease into the battle like you're gonna you're gonna be on this expansive area and you know you're gonna the movement to contact is gonna be is gonna be as important as the contact unlike a pickup game where it's three two one go go, go. Uh, <laughs> No oh, one, no one, no one went right. No one went right. <laughs> or they're always favoring right because they're right-handed. Let's go left. Oh, oh, it didn't work out so well. All right. All right. Uh, one more question. Let's do one more question on this one. George. No, I just picked the last one. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it's back to me. Guess, it's the final question. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, it was a long one. All right. John. Uh, what? August. Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Ungst. Ungst. Oh, yeah. yeah. John Ungst. I right. read your comment. I shouldn't have. Died. I started an airsoft team. I have a few core guys, but everybody struggles to get to the meetings, get the loadout, and play games at local fields. How would you suggest motivating them to come and be part of the team? I don't want to kick them out, but something needs to be done to get them motivated. <laughs> kick them out. I like this question. This kick is, them this out. Good. This this is, is, I got to put this right here because I want to address everything. This is a good final question. Kick them out. Um, kick them out. 
You're not really on a team anymore. Kick him out. Okay, so that's yours. Go, <laughs> go, go. I've been on a team for a long time. Um, we don't have a specific loadout or specific meetings we have to go to. We play together. We're friends. We have similar uniform requirements, obviously, mm-hmm. but we don't. Not everybody has to have a 6094A or whatever. Yeah. Nods. Yeah. Um, to, uh, I'm referencing somebody, so uh, but you don't uh, have not get off the two. <laughs> <laughs> we don't all have to run system of PTWs. Okay, um, that's so continue. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, if they're not motivated, then I would say, yeah, I mean, give them an ultimatum, but you shouldn't kick them off just because they're you know they don't want to be on the team. No, anymore, but I mean, but... your team is only as effective as the dedication of the players. You, you can't. You can't you know, plan on there being a full squad and then have three of the guys that are necessary for the squad to work together not make it because, you know, they've got other hobbies. That's understandable. You know, don't hold it against them, but the reality is if you're trying to, you know, dedicate a team that has a functioning squad that plays together regularly to make you more effective, if you have guys that can't make it, you need to find other yeah. guys that are yeah. more dedicated. That's, that's yeah. very true. I'm, like, right in the middle when it comes to this. Like, I've been on several teams. I don't really believe in teams anymore um, just because it just depends on what direction you want to go with your team. Is this something that is just for your for you and your buddies as a team to go out and have fun? or wear the same patch? Yeah, or is yeah. this, like, <clears throat> we are a military unit that is going to just – you know, train and be on the ready, all this stuff. So, I mean, I would say, okay, if you're on this side over here of, you know, friends, you know, tell your buddies like, hey, man, you need to show a little bit more dedication or, you know, this team isn't going to work. If If, that's the goal. If that's the goal. If if you're just out to have fun. If you are like this really hardcore team and you want to try to make a name for yourself and stuff, then kick kick them out. out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and, also, and not, maybe, not, maybe not even kick them out. Increase the size of your team. Replace those members as subs. Or maybe. just, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Well, you could always, you know, for example, you don't have to have a team to go play Airsoft with friends. You could, I mean, the three of us aren't on a team. Have we played Airsoft together before? We yes, all we wear have. the same patch and camo. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you don't have to necessarily be on a team to play together. Yeah. And then in terms of motivating them, uh, I mean, you can't really... I think there's, just there's, talking there's, to them. There's really, really there's really no incentive. I mean, it's 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 pretty hard as it is to get people to to get a group of guys to all show up at one one place and all get the same loadout. That's true. Um, that one's really hard. I mean, that takes a really core, dedicated amount of dudes to to get all the same everything. And even then, everyone's gonna vary in, in their own little way. Everybody has their own body type. As yeah. long as you're wearing similar colors, I think that's yeah, that's think just that's, as effective. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I say even BDUs pretty much. Yeah. You don't all have to run JPCs, but yeah. as yeah. long as they're all Coyote Brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in terms of motivation, not much you could do. Maybe, here, here's my one suggestion. Take a bunch of cool photos, and then the, then the guys that show up don't get to be in the photos, and they're just like, oh, <laughs> no, go. we missed the yeah. gear day. And since most, <laughs> and since most people run cameras anyway, make sure you get some sick footage. And then yeah, like, See, yeah. This is what you there you go. That's how you motivate them. Le- ostracize them. Leave them out. Yeah, that's what, and that's then they'll what, want to come back and be like, "Hey, man, um, I, can I, heard, I come this week? Yeah, I, I, I saw guys, I uh, saw the cool photos. Can I yeah, get in on Airsoft that? is all about the cool photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, thanks for joining us once again for the Not So Round Table. Thanks to Jet for joining us and answering some questions. For future questions, just comment in the section below. Kind of let us know what you'd like uh, our opinion on or something, you know, some insight into the world of Airsoft. And uh, if you guys like it, we'll keep doing this series. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to keep us doing videos like this. And uh, we'll see you next time.